Hi, everybody. It's Mark Rushton at markrushton.com. It is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. And this video is called What Works for Me as an Independent Recording Artist. Now, I've kind of touched on these sorts of things before here. You know, I've uh, in the past videos, I've talked about, you know, the 10 rules, you know, of uh, what's it called? The 10 rules for teachers and artists. I love rule number seven. The only rule is work. I love how big that is. It's great. And rule number four, consider consider everything an experiment. That's been a guiding uh, a guiding principle of mine for many years here. And then, of course, there's the Brian Eno advice here, which was, uh, let's shrink this down a little bit. And what the heck did I just do? Let's see here. Yeah, if you could email your 20-year-old self about what was ahead, what would you tell him? I think I'd say, put out as much as you can. Doesn't do anything sitting on a shelf. Good advice. And then, of course, there's the uh, the Andy Warhol. Now, why does it do that there? Yes, don't think about making art. Just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. And while they're deciding, make even more art. Like, if you can't get inspired with those three quotes, it's not necessarily as a fine artist, which I am, but as a recording artist, which I also am, then I, I don't know what to say. But I thought I'd expand upon that a little bit here with, the, with this video. What works for me as an independent recording artist? And I've been releasing music on digital music services for over 17 years and um, done okay here the last, last several years. Really, it, the, ever since the rise of streaming services worldwide, which I believe now 450 million people worldwide subscribe to music streaming services. Uh, the music that I release under my name, and I don't know, it's like at least 20 other pseudonyms, band names and stuff. Um, I've had a little bit of success with it, right? I'll just, we'll just put it that way. Just put it that way. I'm not going to show you any numbers because what's the point? But I, I, you know, and I don't, I don't really have anybody to talk to with this. Not really. So I talk to the camera, which is a you. And if you find this, that's great. If you think I'm full of crap, well, that's fine. You don't have to watch it. So what works for me as an independent recording artist? Yeah. Number one, don't sign any bad contracts, right? That's why I'm indie. I don't want to give up 85% or 50% or whatever of what I created, what I wrote, what I, what I composed, what I made. Don't sign those ridiculous contracts. But here's just kind of the little things here. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk this out here. Um, I have talked to people in the past, other musicians. And I said, well, do you, do you make playlists? Um, and they're like, well, on like on Spotify, yes, but you know, that's not the only music streaming service out there. There's a whole bunch, you know, that's why I subscribe to six different music streaming services so that I can have a presence on all of them. So I can make playlists on all of them. And, you know, the, typically they'll say, yeah, I've made playlists before, you know, they make one or two and I shared it with my friends and family. And it's just like that. No, no, that's not enough. That's not enough. You need, you need to. You need to make hundreds. You need, you, you need to make hundreds. Hundreds? Why, that's work. Yes, that's work. You need to know. You need, <laughs> you need to know how to sell this Band-Aid 500 different ways. This isn't even a Band-Aid. It's a, you know, bandage or whatever. But it's like that sort of thing. Well, I use, I like to use Tic Tac here. So, yeah. Figure out how to sell those Tic Tac five, 500 different ways. You might be onto something. You'll learn something in the process. You don't have to do 500 today. Just do one a day for the next 500 days. I guarantee after about two months, you'll start to get pretty good at it. You'll start to come up with new ideas that it won't end. I said recently to somebody, I said, uh, uh, when I started making playlists and I got to about 50, I thought, God, I'm going to, the well's going to run dry at some point. And here that I am, I don't know where I am in the, in the few hundreds. I guess I'm in the low 300s or something like that on one service, another service. I've got a couple hundred or whatever. You, 
I just keep coming up with new ideas and new, new and different ways to to market my catalog, my catalog, and other people's catalogs as well. So that's that's my first advice to somebody is if they're a musician, learn how to sell that song as many different ways as you can. And the first way to do that is is playlists, public playlists, and not just on one platform. Get something like Soundies and, and get accounts on the other platforms because your audience just isn't here or there or wherever. It's everywhere. Um, that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have accounts? Do you have accounts on multiple streaming services? Well, that's six, that's $60 a month. Yeah. That's an expense. That's an expense. And I make, I, I make money off of that expense. We'll get to the making money bit here in a little bit here. I know it's really super exciting. Um, do you, do you release music regularly? Do you release new music regularly? If it's like, yeah, every year, or every two years or something, that's no, no, no. You want to be a recording artist? Then you release stuff all the time. Look at, look at Robert Pollard from Guided by Voices and now Cub Scout Bowling Pins. The guy's cranking it out. He's in his sixties. <laughs> he seems to come up with like an album a week of fantastic material. So, uh, or just, I, even somebody like Paul Weller, who, who seems to be just cranking the albums out like crazy. Good for him. And they're good. Uh, even if you're just releasing singles once a month or something like that, maybe once every two months, depending on if you have to work a day job, come up with something new, get it out there. You can compile it later. Don't worry about the album. Don't worry about the EP. Such a continuous flow of new product. Again, you'll get better at it over time, I hope. Um, yeah, do you release music under pseudonyms? It, that's what I do. It kind of works for me. Um, I'm much more popular, not myself. It's uh, it's it's strange, but it, it it's true. Look at a lot of the uh, look at a lot of bands over the years. They've had little side bands and stuff like that. Remember the XTC? They had the Dukes of Stratosphere. They had the Three Wise Men. Uh, that that's always curious. These little dotted lines from the discography, like they're the you know Japan Rain Tree Crow, that sort of thing. All the dead bands. You know, the Grateful Dead, Dead and Company, Further, Rat Dog, Phil Lesh and Friends. How do you know this? Ah, you listen to everything. <laughs> uh, what's the other thing? And so, yeah, release release music under pseudonyms. You know, you might make one, a certain kind of music. Maybe you're making a different type of music over here. Release it under a different name. You could do that. If the world's not going to crash, you might actually do better as this other band, you know? Uh, here's What's the other thing? Oh, do you know how to load a TSV, CSV, or TXT in Excel and filter the data? If you, if you don't know how to load a TSV, a CSV, or a TXT in Excel and filter the data, take a class. Learn how to do it. I mean, if you, if you, if you get an XLS or XLSX and you don't know how to filter the data, take a class. Once you figure it out, once, it, once you're taught it, it's not that difficult. It's a good thing to know. It's a way for you to spot trends in your royalty statements if you are an independent musician. Uh, that's the other thing. Oh, do you have a PRO? Oh, what's a PRO? A performance rights organization? Are you, are you a member of ASCAP or BMI or CSAC? If you're not, you're not, you're not professional enough. You got to be a member of a PRO. Do you have a company like Song Trust that's collecting your mechanical and publishing worldwide? Right? Yes, you can rely on the MLC, and you know they, t you know they will distribute that or whatever. But what about the rest of the world? And you know, once you get a certain dis uh, catalog, you need somebody to manage that. Yeah, Song Trust takes fifteen percent. Worth it worth it and of course in the description there is my song trust referral code <laughs> i've been with them almost two years here they have gotten me money they have gotten me mechanical and publishing royalties 
that I never would have gotten if I hadn't signed up with them. There are other companies that do the same sort of thing, but that's I'm with Song Trust, and that's you know that it saves me an absolute ton of time. And they've gotten me the money. That's great. If you're making money as a recording artist, do you have a CPA? You know, do you keep expenses? Do you do you have like a Schedule C that you keep? That's what I do. That's my my uh, CPA. First, she tried to. She's like, well, you know, what do you want? How do you want to keep your stuff? And I said, well, maybe I'll go get QuickBooks. And then I couldn't figure out QuickBooks, <laughs> even though I have, I'm in tech. I couldn't. It was hard. Like, gee whiz. So she's like, here, here's, I made you like a Schedule C in Excel and you just fill it out over the course of the year. Super easy. I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. And then you keep, you know, a little accordion file with all your receipts and, and, you know, statements and stuff like that. It makes it easy for her, you know, every spring. Yeah. Do you file quarterly taxes? That's, Yeah. You know, if you have a CPA and you're filing quarterly taxes as a recording artist, you're on your way. That's all, that's all I can say. All right, here. So here's the other side. Here's some things I don't do as a recording artist. And this works for me. And <laughs> I don't do merch. I don't do any merch. I don't waste my time with it. There's no link to whatever company out there that handles merch and there's a ton of them. I don't care. I don't have the Mark Rushton army. I don't have the Mark Rushton fan base, uh, everything else. I'm not, I, I used to be kind of interested in that. You'll hear people talking about that all the time. Merch, merch can be, that's fine. If you're a touring band, that's fine. That's fine. If you want to sell some tchotchkes locally, that's it's okay, but I don't waste my time with it. I'd, I'd rather create and release new music and get it into playlists and do things that way. I'm not, I'm not into making t-shirts or limited edition posters or whatever. Here's another thing I don't do. I don't buy ads. I don't buy ads. You know, uh, someday with the fine art, I might do some direct mail marketing, but yeah, as far as the music is concerned, I would never buy a Facebook ad, never buy an Instagram ad. Definitely don't buy a Google ad. I know it's terrible. I'll probably get put into Google jail for saying that it's, 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 or Facebook jail for it. It's like, what? It's just, no, I I've known of too many artists who have done this and gone down this road thinking they've been, Oh, well, you know, and, and, who are the people out there who are saying, oh, you should buy ads. It's really good. And you'll get likes. And yeah, everyone's just sitting around waiting to read an ad by you. So yeah, I don't do ads. Never, never do ads. I also don't do anything funny. And by funny, I mean illegal. Uh, all these streaming companies are data companies. Do not try to look bigger. Do not try to inflate, never inflate your numbers. Really, the, the least, don't listen to your music as, as little as possible. Do not listen to your music on streaming services. Check it out once just to make sure that everything is okay and then don't ever listen to it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. They're data companies. I, I see this all the time, all the time, all over the internet, you know, and for years, you know, it was kind of like, you could buy Twitter followers. You could buy Facebook followers and all that sort of stuff. Why? Why are you doing Why? Why are you doing that? That sucks. What a waste of money and time. It's fake. Don't do that. So if you try to do that with listens or followers or anything like that, don't do it. Don't. They're data companies. They're looking for that stuff. Are you an idiot? <laughs> I also don't promote my music to the people I know. That's right. Yeah, the either, no, I rarely anything to friends and family. Rarely, absolutely rarely. You know, if it is, it's almost inadvertent. Uh, they either subscribe to the newsletter or they don't. 
they either watch these videos or they don't. They same with, they either listen to the podcast or they don't. Don't waste your time. I may maybe your mom and dad want to hear it. That's like, oh look, he's got an EP out. That's fine. If they want, if they ask about it, that's fine. Send it to them or whatever. But just you need to be promoting your music to the unknown, to the 450 million people paying for subscriptions around the world. That's who your audience is. They don't care about you. They care about the music that that you produce, right? No one's looking for Mark Rushton. Not many. But the kind of music that I produce under my name and the pseudonyms, there are people looking for that sort of stuff, music and sounds. Um, other things I don't care about, I don't care about the per stream. You go around and you read music news sites all over the pl- all o- all over the place, particularly in the media. They get hung up on the per stream. Oh, the per stream, you know. Don't the, there's you can't control that. What do you care? What do you go? Well, I don't want my music on Spotify because they pay less. And I... oh god, just just give up. What a waste of time. I don't care about music reviewers. Do not care about music re- reviewers. They just, have you read any lately? It's it's like a dissertation and it's all the junk and traits and nonsense and stuff. These, they will, these, hopefully these reviews will not age well. Go back and read some um, music reviews, like jazz reviews from the fifties and sixties or, uh, you know, by and large, most of the stuff that Robert Kreisgau wrote for the village voice is terse little reviews. There's it's, there's much more. I, I don't know. There's much, much more honesty in that than the, the, just the, the people who seem to be getting paid by the word. Oh my God. And everything's, you know, Lake Wobegon effect. It's everything is above average. Give me a break. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I never send anything out to music reviewers. Nothing. Zero. Nada. What you know, the power of the media and newspapers? <laughs> you know, you know, reading newspapers? <laughs> Not your audience. <laughs> Waste of time. Blogs. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe. I I don't know. I don't know. Blogs still a thing? I don't I don't. So yeah, I don't care about music reviewers, the media, newspapers, but I don't care. I, I want random people happening upon my music. That's what I want. And listening and just, just having somebody be a casual, casual listener. That's what's important to me. And it seems to work. Uh, I don't care about vinyl or cassettes, right? If you want to do that, fine. But... You know, unless you sell a lot of stuff or you're an artsy person who can kind of crank that out on your own, maybe throw that in as an extra on your band camp or something like that. And by the way, I love band camp. I love band camp. It's, it's a good service. I love it because they haven't, they haven't changed their interface. They didn't try to become a streaming music service. That's one thing I like. So yeah. If you're on the streaming music services, you should also be a, you should also have everything on Bandcamp. So on Bandcamp, you can do all the extra stuff. If you want to do your, if you want to do merch, do it on Bandcamp. If you want to do vinyl or cassettes, do it on Bandcamp. But I don't have time for that. I don't have. I'm too busy making new stuff and getting it out there. I mean, just objects that you have to store and you get stuff. I got enough stuff back here, you know. So anyway, that every now and then, again, I just have to talk to the camera. I just have to talk to the camera because who else am I going to talk to about this sort of stuff? I know nobody's going to watch this, but I, you know, I am where I am. Yeah. What works for me as an independent recording artist, the main thing is just regularly releasing music and making playlists and understanding the different music streaming services out there, understanding all the services, the processes, everything. Not caring about not caring about the Mark Rushton fan base, the army. There's no army. You know, your listeners out there are my listeners anyway, are are random and casual 
and they have been for some time. And I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine. I don't need to have somebody knocking on my front door, you know, or boiling the rabbit. I don't need that. Just, I don't need that. <laughs> boiling the rabbit. All right. So <laughs> I just had to get that out. What can I say? It is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. And yeah, no one's no one's gonna watch this. No one's gonna watch it to this point in time. I don't care. I had to get it out of me. I had to get it out of me. Back to the grind. Back to the grind. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>